I'm very excited to announce that I now have a working mini split in my tiny house. This is something that would have been super helpful during the summer, although it is still kind of hot here in Texas, but we weren't working inside during the summer, so moot point. However, now that we're starting to work on the inside, it's great to have some form of air conditioner. Ooh. Ooh. This is definitely one of the more technical projects for the tiny house. So I was very reliant on Doug and his expertise in having installed a few of these before. A mini split is simply a ductless air conditioning system. Uh, they're great for tiny spaces. What I appreciate about the mini split is that it is compact. The interior unit you can just hang up on the wall and the exterior unit is much smaller than like a traditional air conditioning fan outside and it can also be mounted to the tiny house so I can take it with me. I did a lot of research before I actually purchased the mini split that I have today and I really wanted to be conscientious of there was a lot of recommendation not to get a unit that was for bigger spaces because you start to lose energy efficiency. Based off of my square footage of about 320, 350 square feet, I chose to go with the 12,000 BTU system. I wanted something reasonably priced, but also from a brand that I could trust in case anything went wrong. Taco, come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. Okay. A lot of the popular brands that I found on other tiny house blogs was one called Mr. Cool, and that one was very expensive. Um, and then some of the cheaper brands I found off of Amazon, like Della was a super popular brand. And I have friends who actually have Della units, but I decided to meet in between and go with a Pioneer. Another important factor for your mini split system is determining where the interior unit will be and the exterior unit will be. You want them fairly close to each other because they have to connect through a hose. And the default hose size for the Pioneer I was looking at in mini units other than Pioneer, um, was 16 feet copper line. And that was a bit too long because I knew I wanted to put the indoor unit above the kitchen sink window, so that shorter wall. And I wanted the exterior unit right on the other side of that same wall. So all the pipe had to do was go straight down. Um, luckily, Pioneer sold a 10 feet copper kit. And so I was able to purchase that. And that is another reason why I went with Pioneer. I also purchased a mounting bracket off of Amazon because I knew I wanted to mount the exterior unit to the house. First, we tackled the indoor unit. We unpacked it. We determined exactly where I wanted it mounted on the wall. I went ahead and put insulation behind it and we got a, um, a spare piece of cedar siding that is close to a half inch, which is the thickness of the rest of the siding will be for the house. And we actually put the mount on that and then mounted the indoor unit. And this is so that when we do do the siding, we don't have to take down the unit. We can just side, add the siding around it. We also had to drill holes for where all of that piping would go. So there's the two copper pipes that run to and from the exterior unit. There's a drain pipe, and then there is the wire that connects the two units. We may have drilled one too many holes because we miscalculated how far away from the unit that the pipes would need to exit out the house. So uh, we were able to patch that up, but it was pretty funny. So the kit comes with the wire that connects the two units. And this was a bit of a choose your own adventure. You got to pick what colors went with what numbers for the unit itself. We did reverse alphabetical. So it was white, red, black. And this was important to remember because the how you wired it to the exterior unit needed to match. We're going white, then red, red, and black. The copper hoses that were connected to the unit itself were pointing in the opposite direction of where we wanted them to go, uh, but this was okay. 
Um, you can move the pipes, but you have to be very, 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 very careful because if you put any kinks in these copper pipes, then the unit won't work anymore. And it is uh, a tricky DIY project, but Doug very carefully got them to point the other direction. We also needed to add a bit of a bend so that it went down the wall where we wanted it to go. So that was also a little tricky. And then we went ahead and unfurled the 10 feet copper pipes and connected the ends that went to the interior unit. Under pressure and that way you know that that unit is sealed, right? Yeah. What's the other line? Uh, so one is liquid, one is gas. Got it. So it comes in as liquid, mm -hmm. goes through the orifice and expands. That's what makes it cold on expansion and it comes back as a gas. When we hooked up the copper pipes to each other, there was the sealant that was given in the kit, but Doug already had an open bottle of it that we used around them to connect the brass connectors together. Okay. Setting all of this up had taken a few hours. It was dinner time. So Doug and I decided to reconvene later in the week to finish everything. We met up on Saturday morning and we were ready to work on the exterior unit. So the first thing we did was we installed the brackets that I got from Amazon. Gonna go. <laughs> Oh, that's what we decided was right there, right? Yeah. So this involved a lot of measuring and checking. We wanted to hit studs in the house, but we weren't able to make that happen just because of the size of the unit and where the studs were. It did not align, but it's okay. Uh, we had bolts and nuts to strengthen everything up together and it was able to hold the weight of the unit. The mounting kit came with like huge masonry bolts that we did not need because I just had wood to install it into. And so luckily in Doug's Mary Poppins bag of a barn had extra bolts and nuts and washers that we could use. Once the exterior unit was set up on the brackets, we could then figure out where we wanted the hose to exit the house from the interior unit. Doug very easily drilled a hole through my beautiful cedar siding, but it was well worth it. And then we went back inside to rebend the copper pipes very carefully to maneuver them through that hole. This was tricky and luckily with a lot of patience and just slowly bending as we needed, we were able to get them through. Next was then curling those pipes in the right way to get them to connect to the exterior unit. And we ended up with kind of like a piglet's tail of a curl. So Doug connected those pipes and then we were ready to vacuum the hoses. This is a really important step for a DIY mini split system. And the idea is that you wanna vacuum all of the air out of the copper hoses so that you can then charge everything up and everything will work wonderfully. Um, so we had to wait 20 minutes for the vacuum to run. And then during that time, we finished up wiring the connection from the interior unit to the exterior unit, remembering the white, red, black ordering of things. After the 20 minutes, it looked like we were good. And so then we set another five minute timer, turned off the vacuum and made sure everything stayed the same and looked good, um, making sure there were no like leaks or something wonky happening that we couldn't see. Once those five minutes passed, we were in the clear, seemed like everything was good. And now we were ready to give power to the whole unit from the electric box in the house to the unit itself. The kit came with a connector box that we installed right next to the exterior unit. The last step was to use an Allen wrench to release the charge to the exterior unit. 
I unfortunately had to go to the, or fortunately really, go to the Texas Book Festival and it was a lot of fun. I got to see some really cool author panels. I saw Lyle Lovett was there. He apparently lives in Austin, had some delicious Amy's ice cream. It was a event worth going to, but that meant that Doug and our surprise visitor, Phil, uh, finished up the rest of the electrical and turning on the unit, and they sent me this video to share the success. What is today? Today is November 16th, 2024. We just got Kay's mini split to work. You can't see the number on it from here. Hold on, let me get up there. Set at 70. And that's turbo, so it could be more quiet than that. There's turbo off. Oh, it's whisper quiet. Overall, super thankful to our MVP, Doug, and also Phil for coming and joining, and even though he was feeling a little sick. So that was really great. Definitely couldn't have happened without them. Up next, we'll be putting up all of the vents for plumbing in the walls. Y'all, plumbing is hard and I'm almost done. So I'll update y'all on that soon. And then after that will be electrical rough in. So things are happening. Things have been great. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.